Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Everything OneNote. Today, I'm gonna to talk about tables. I'm gonna show you a little workaround as it's long known in OneNote that it doesn't have the ability to merge cells or split cells. So I'm gonna show you a couple little workarounds to essentially give you the same effect. All right guys, so like I said, as you know, if you're a common OneNote user, the ability to merge cells and split cells isn't quite there yet. It might be there one day, but the ability that you have in Word or other other programs like that, you might be quite used to that. In OneNote, it's pretty stock standard with um, how you can create your cells. So I'm just going to show you a couple little workarounds to essentially give you that same effect of a merge or split cells without having the actual features of merging and split cells. So I'm just gonna show you a quick example if I'm gonna pull up a Word document. So if you're pulling something across from Word that obviously this has a few features where it's got obviously this column is quite long and goes all the way across where these are quite consistent. Uh, so if I just highlight all of that and I'm gonna copy this across into my OneNote page and just have a look what happens. And see into my OneNote page, I'm just gonna paste it straight into there. And you see straight away my formatting isn't quite the same as it was in Word. Obviously these text boxes I can easily drag out and sort of create that feel again. So it's pretty easy to work around. But you can see this one that sort of ran all the way across, this, this row here is very much split all the way down. So like I said, it's very stock standard and you're just gonna give you sort of rows and columns. You don't have the ability to split or create different versions of that. So I'm gonna show you a couple of little tips to uh, fix or get around that. I guess, so I'm just gonna quickly get rid of that. And essentially, it's a little bit more work, but it just sort of starts with creating each line or cell by themselves. So as long as you keep it all within the same text container, which is what I've got here. So let's say I want to insert a table. And firstly, I wanna start off with say a three by one for whatever reason. I'm gonna spread those out to try and get roughly the same size. And then from there underneath, I'm essentially I'm just gonna create a new row just straight in underneath it. So it might be this time, I actually just want a single row. So again, I'm just gonna drag that out and all the way across. So you can see they're not actually connected, but they are pretty close. So once you start to create a bit of the worksheet all the way down, you're gonna see that um, it does look actually quite similar, okay? And then essentially just a process is continuing going over there. Again, all within the same text container. This time I might need, let's say four, okay? And again, a bit of a guesstimate in your spacing might involve a little bit of tweaking and things like that. That one's probably a little bit off, a little bit longer. Let's go, that's, let's say that's close enough. And let's say if this is obviously something that is then gonna be reoccurring, I might need a new single one in below and drag that out. And that's something that is then gonna be consistently going. I might start that process again, if that's what a specific worksheet or a specific agenda, whatever it is, copy all of those and straight in underneath and just paste it again. So once I've created that once, not doing it every single time, just simply repeating. Um, that's essentially it. I'm just gonna show you a couple of examples, a couple of different ways you can represent that. So here I have on this one, so we're looking at, this is like an, a science experiment type template, I guess, not a science teacher, but I had a little crack. But so essentially I've got my question and the student's right in the box below. And then I've obviously, I've created so sort of three by two cells there, A, B, C, and used a little bit of the shading as well on your table, just to create a bit of a color coordination. It was just another advantage of using tables rather than just your text containers. Then I've created a two by one or two by two, and then a one by one, and again, just a repeated two by one. And it all looks, I guess, quite like it's all pretty close to being all together in an actual table, similar to what you would get in Word. Another example is the same thing, but I've just spaced it out a little bit. So in between each one, I've just created a gap in between. So I guess it just comes down to personal preference, whether you want some of your questions or sections to be spaced out a little bit more. Um, but essentially that's the same worksheet there. And the last one is another option you have, and again, it just comes down to personal preference, is you can actually create uh, text uh, tables within tables. So what I've done is you can see here, I've got uh, my ABC across here, my three by two, and I've actually put that inside this larger one by one cell. So if there is a need for that, you um, obviously can do that as well. It can, can kind of look a bit 
clunky or a little bit um, complicated because you've got tables within tables. But um, if you like that look or effect, then obviously you have that option as well. So there you go. Just a quick little way to do a merge cells workaround. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And to keep up to date, don't forget to follow us. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comment section. Cheers.